Am I on the chat screen now? Screen. Oh, man. We're here. We made it. A little bit better, I hope, than last week. Uh, thanks to tech support Luke and, and Brian over there. <laughs> Brian's in the peanut gallery tonight. <laughs> he's got a, he's got, you can't see it, but he's got this little cooler next to him. It looks to be packed full. <laughs> Absolutely. And the popcorn. So welcome, everyone. Uh, we appreciate your patience last week and laughing along with us. We've come a long ways. Uh, Luke has loaned us, graciously loaned us, his computer and I think we got things set up so you should actually be able to see Luke right now and Brian so say hi guys hey. can everybody hear us all right um, if you're watching on your phone just so you know if you have the app you can actually use the chat feature if you don't have the app it won't allow you to use the chat so it is worth getting the app then you can follow us too so always worth it uh, subscribing to us but Everybody hear us so far? We got any activity going on? Good. Everybody's Nicholas said great improvements, nice work. Yay. All right. <laughs> we it's good to hear. Uh, we wanted to run a test actually, but we ran out of time because I was trying to figure some stuff out, and we've made it. So tonight we're going to be tying a sculpin pattern called the Coyote Ugly. Uh, of course, it's inspired by the 90s movie. I mean, I, I was sitting watching that movie. I'm like, I need to, to name a fly. No, I'm just kidding. Um, actually, this is a it's a pretty specific streamer I tie for a really particular type of water. Um, there's sections of the upper Manistee that are real clear and shallow and all sand bottom. And there's, there's good fish in there, I've heard. I mean, I don't know. It's the rumor. It's, it's the rumor, but actually, they're there. But I wanted a fly that I could put on a jig hook that kind of looked really natural, blended in, pushed a little bit of water, wasn't too large of a profile, single hook. So this is really modeled a lot after the Home Invader. If you've seen that fly, great fly. Arctic Fox for a head. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But this is specifically for that water type. Clear water, sand bottom. Let's just jump in. Of course, if you don't have a jig hook, I will say grab a Trout Predator A-Rex or a B-10S. You can tie this inverted. I'm not a huge fan of tying regular hooks inverted. You're just, you're fighting physics. Not that physics was, you know, the thing <laughs> that I really excelled at. Uh, if you're out there, Mr. Capron, I survived. So I'm still... <laughs> <Despite>. <laughs> Thanks to a lot of friends, luckily. But... Um, if you can find some jig hooks, it's worth doing. I, weight goes on the bottom. I, I've always thought that just made sense. And I've tied, I don't know, you guys tied flies and had them just turn over immediately once you once you put lead eyes on top. It doesn't doesn't work well. So tonight we're gonna be tying on a on a Gamagatsu 60 degree round bend jig hook. Also, the Umqua hooks are great as well. Two aughts, the same as a one aught once you go to the Umqua. Not that that matters, but sizable hook is a good way to go. Make sure this is secure in your vise. All right. I'm going to start with Vivas 140. Are we in picture in picture now? Awesome. Thank you, Tech Luke. <laughs> I'm going to start my thread. I'm not worried about starting my thread real far back. I actually want a small thread base. I think when you're attaching eyes to the shank of a hook, if you have just a bare shank, they're going to slide around. Think about spinning deer hair. It always works best when you have a bare shank. Well, I don't want it to spin. So I'm going to add a thread base here and then work back. Grab my scissors. And then we're using double pupil lead eyes. You can use whatever you got. They all work. Large is a good way to go, though. Big thing here is I'm leaving at least an eye kind of amount of space here. I want there to be room to wrap a dubbing loop in front of it. You don't want to be wrapping up this shank towards the eye. It just gets messy at that point. So give yourself some space doing about six to eight wraps in one direction and then I switch. Sorry, I'm kind of reaching here. 
with things how they are. Okay. And then I start in with kind of crisscross and I wrap around underneath. Do not be afraid to use some thread tension here. That's why we're using 140. You can go all the way on up to 210 or more, but I think the, the thicker that thread is, unfortunately, it's just going to fill up this gap. And I really want to be able to add material to the gap between the dumbbell eyes there. Again, we'll answer questions at the end of this fly, so if you're able to put them in there or hang on to them, we'll go through. We'll have Luke and Brian moderate some questions and we'll go through them and answer them as best as we can. You can glue this if you want. I'm not going to worry about gluing at this point, but I am going to start working my way back. Working right on back to the barb. That's when we're going to grab some marabou. I've prepped a bunch. That's what I did. I took the morning off and actually prepped all this stuff. So it makes it really easy. These organizers from Hairline. Not that you need a last minute stocking stuffer, but this is a good option. We're going to use two colors tonight. This is ginger and cream. We're going to stack them. And we want to prep them so they're roughly about the same length. Now this ginger marabou has a lot more going on. That looks pretty good. You can use barred marabou as well from Montana Fly Company. It's one of our favorites. But since we're adding a barred saddle hackle, I think it's just overkill at that point. You don't want this whole thing looking like stripes all the time. A little bit goes a long way. Big thing to remember here if I'm tying two colors in here, remember I'm tying inverted right now. So I want the darker color on the bottom, the lighter on the top. And I'm going to measure these out. I want a shank and a half length. Because this is a single fly, I don't want it just to be short and stubby. That head would dominate the fly. You'd have no length to it. Excuse me. If you look at sculpins, you know, they have this great taper all the way down. Really fat head up front, and they taper all the way back down. So you need some length. And I see that a lot with folks new to tying flies is everything's too short. Never trim your woolly bugger, Marabou. That's for sure. All right, let me restack these. Got busy tying or talking and so one I'm gonna add a little bit and a half great lash this down I usually put three or four wraps there and then I actually pull this back and add a few wraps to the shank that'll help you lock it in if you have trouble with marabou spinning around the shank pull your material up add some wraps to the shank that's gonna lock everything into place and then we're gonna work our way up the shank. Trim your excess. I did wrap back to the barb there. One more thing, if you don't have really heavy large eyes, you can always add a little bit of weighted wire right behind them. I did that right here. So if you have maybe Maybe some medium eyes or something. You don't. You're not able to really get down as far as you want. That's a good way to do it. Okay, wrapping over this stuff. I'm gonna bring my thread to the bar or to the point there. I'm gonna add some lateral scale. This is a large lateral scale. You can use the the smaller stuff too. Works great. But I wanted this to stand out since this isn't isn't the brightest fly. I'm going to add some on my side. Flip this guy. Use your rotary vise. They're wonderful for, fl for flies just like this. Okay, I'm going to trim these roughly flush with the marabou. And if the marabou is getting in your way, wet your fingers. 
and that's going to tame it right out. Okay. Next thing, we're going to use a body material, UV Polar Chenille. If you haven't used this stuff, it's one of the most popular thing in the shop for good reason. It's just so easy to put into every fly. It looks great. Tons of color combinations. Now, you could do a complex, excuse me, a complex twist technique here and at and blend it with schloppen. It's just not necessary. You're not going to see it. Most of this flash gets covered up. And that's what I want. Just a little bit of flash underneath these feathers here. Kind of a translucent look. Okay, bring your thread up. Here's a trick if you're tying on jig hooks and you want to use your rotary function, jump your thread to in front of the eyes before you half hitch or whip finish because you're going to end up with a tangled mess otherwise. Bring your cradle in. I gotta adjust this. This thing went crazy, it looks like. There we go. Want that level. Everybody doing good? Awesome. Use this rotary function. These don't have to be the tightest wraps. Don't worry about that. You know, if you're using a softer material for the head, you want more structure back here to support it. You know, the if you're building a rabbit head, for instance, rabbit's fairly short. It doesn't have a lot of under fur to it where it can support itself like this coyote head. So I would add maybe a little bit of schloppen or even some mallard as a collar. Add some length to it, add some shoulders, we call them. Now I pause every few wraps and kind of comb everything back. I'm wrapping right to the base of the eyes here. Trying to knock everything over. Bring your thread back. Great, get that material out of the way. We're going to make a big mess next. All right, check everything's good. Next thing, we're going to grab some barred feathers, whatever you have. If you have some MFC barred saddle hackle, it's great. This is uh, a Magnum neck, I believe. This is awesome. Uh, I was really lucky to buy this a few years ago, um, and I, I'm a little cautious about when I use it is you know you know what I'm talking about if you have one of these necks you know even this extra feather I'm gonna take this home and save this it's not going anywhere now I want to measure my feather out to be roughly the same length as out to my marabou it doesn't need to extend any longer it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything for me there and really you're only gonna notice it once it touches back to the marabou so My peanut gallery guys are laughing over here. Do we have... You have a comment that says that your dog thinks you're in the computer right now. <laughs> That's Manny. That's Manny. So, so you better say hi to Hank. Hi, Hank. Hi, Rufio. Miss you, boys. Uh, don't worry. You can jump on me and attack me when I get home. Don't worry. Have to turn the volume down for him. Usually Hank just likes to, he likes lots of movement in videos, especially horses. That's his, oh, that's his thing. Uh, he'll Are you a brony? <laughs> Are you into the Milo Pony thing? The brony. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> Men that are into Milo Pony, man, it's called a brony. Uh, it's called a Western, man. It's, watch, what's the... Uh, what we, do you watch, Gunsmoke? <laughs> no, okay, Timmy. We did just watch uh, Godless. Rewatched it. Netflix. Excellent. Highly recommend. This is slowly becoming a what do you do all winter, or what do you watch all winter while you're tying flies channel, right? We'll just review stuff while we tie flies. Now I tuck these in. I like to pinch these feathers when I'm tying them in, hold them flat. Don't stress about these rolling around and not being perfectly flush to your fly. Once you swim this thing, it's all going to come out in the wash anyway. It'll look fine. Don't you worry about that. So, all right, trim your stems. All right, 
and I'm going to start a dubbing loop. If you haven't done a dubbing loop before, don't worry. They're not that tough. Uh, you can also substitute a brush in this case, something like a, a Foxy brush from EP. Awesome product, probably one of the more underutilized products we sell. A lot of the attention goes to the chromatic brushes because there's flash built in, but those Arctic Fox brushes are actually denser, or the, excuse me, the Foxy brushes are denser and fill out a head just like this a little bit better. Now this is, I guess I tied those feathers a little bit longer. Don't worry about that. So I'm going to actually use my left index finger. I put two or three wraps here in front, roll that around, and then I jump it back. I'm just going to grab my tool. This is the Stonefo Roto Dubbing Tool, one of my favorites. If you watch any of our videos, you've probably seen it. But a paper clip works okay. So, all right, great. Now we're all set. Next thing is the coyote. Why coyote? Right? I mean, there's a lot of things you can make heads of out there. Coyote is really unique in that it has super long guard fibers. And it, it just takes the place of a multi-step fly all in one. So if I wanted to get the exact same effect, say, using Arctic Fox or Rabbit like I was talking about, I'd have to wrap some mallard here for a collar, and then I'd have to you know, build the head on top of that as well. What's up? Probably out of frame here, but I'm just trimming a little bit at a time. I'll hold it up here so you can see what's happening. We haven't added a fourth camera yet. I think we've, we're probably going to wait a little bit on that for the overhead view, but I dream about it. Annie's at home rolling her eyes right now about that exact. <laughs> <laughs> I did not bring a comb tonight, um, but that's okay. Most combs out there designed for fly tying are going to be too fine anyways honestly i want to just bring out just a little bit of that fluff most of this i want to maintain if any of you have used craft fur before you'll know that there's a really small small short fine fluff a medium and then those really long fibers think of this as that i want to use the medium and the long fibers in this loop and go from there excuse me I blame bells for this. So. Now, you could also build a really cool, uh, what do they call the fancy loops, uh, composite loop. You could lay this out. You could lay some ripple ice fiber in here. It would be, it'd be pretty cool. But again, we're just trying to tie a, a pretty subtle sculpin fly. And let me get the hooks all. The other great thing is this stuff, watch that. You can't do that with rabbit, can you? You need a clip. So it sticks together really well. You just put it in your loop there. And it's just going to stay there. I'm going to grab a teeny bit more. Yeah, it just sticks right there. I mean, this is the problem with doing live. I tell <laughs> Normally I'd edit this out, but <laughs> we're going to laugh about it, right? There we go. See all that stuck in there? Nice and dense. That's okay. You're going to comb a lot of this out. Now you want to adjust your loop. So you want to bring all your material over to the far side and just a teeny bit of overlap. I know it's probably tough to see right now. Can you see that, guys, pretty well? Okay. All right. This is what I just used my finger for this. I'm not worried about too much. Yeah, there's more stuff than we'll use, but that's okay. Coyote's cheap. What is this? A dollar fifty, two bucks for coyote. I mean, come on. All right. Then we're just gonna start to to roll this to spin it. When I watch folks do these dubbing loops and they just let rip, <laughs> kind of cringe, 
because you're missing, I mean, you're wasting a lot of material. So I'll spin a little bit and I'll grab my bodkin and I'll start picking stuff up. If you go right to the brush too early, you're going to end up with gaps. It's going to rip material out. It's not, it's not a great way to go. So I'm still going to get fluff. That's okay. But I'm not going to go to my brush or my Velcro tool or my comb or anything like that until I get a few more wraps in here. Holy cow, it's like grooming night at my house here. Better get the vacuum. All right, keep picking. If you're using 6 aught thread, careful with how how many rotations you do, you can actually end up breaking your thread off. So a lot of times I tied this with just 6 aught tonight. I just went with a 140 so we didn't spend time on the change. I'm going to go to my Velcro tool. Pat, what are your thoughts of uh, substituting ram's wool for the coyote fur? Sure. Pattern? Absolutely. But the downside with that is you're going to have to tie it in in clumps. You're going to have to, you know, just... I'd basically tie a clump behind the eye, on top, on bottom, and then in front as well. The loop's nice. I'm looking for this round head. Um, the advantage to ram's wool or something like laser dub or synthetic is that you can cut that and trim it to exactly the shape you want afterwards. If you have it, try it. I mean, that's, that's what fly tying is, is experimentation and making something your own. You know, we borrow from everyone. This is certainly not a... A totally, I mean, original fly. No way. I mean, I'm not the first one to tie marabou on it for a tail, right? Last time I checked. So try it. I think ram's wool is a great, great material. A lot of people struggle with it, though. And especially, I think the big thing is the material itself. It's not the technique. If you don't get really dense, really full, high-quality ram's wool, it's it's not going to work quite as well. So, and you know what? I set up to do rotary. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like it gets in the way. So we're just going to skip the rotary function here. Sorry if you if you've already jumped to that step. And you'll see once we get going here. This is. The majority of the fly i mean i know we spent some time here working on this but this is this makes the fly so two wraps behind the eyes and i'm going to come forward and go between the dumbbells there everybody see that okay really important you keep your tension whatever tool you're using here this is where things tend to go wrong and i'm actually going to do a second wrap in between those dumbbell eyes and it's getting really dense. It's getting crazy. It's just bad hair day, right? But that's okay. That's what we want. And then I can start adding. I'm going to do one good wrap around the shank here. And we're the nice thing is this is really easy to tie off. Trust me. And we're actually going to basically bring this mess down and tame it with our thread wraps on the end when we tie it off. So I'm going to pinch in here. Try not to trap too much of the fiber I've already used on this head. This is the downside for using a really long nozzle on your bobbin. Two, three, four. Come on, Brian. Quarter of the night. All right. Here, I would flip it because you can let go of the bobbin and it's not going to slide off. If you If you had it inverted your threads just gonna unravel and fall off and it's not gonna be fun so before you start combing anything out wrap down on top of this and tame it a little bit and we're basically gonna build a cone here you know if you think of tapering a nymph body go down and back otherwise it's just gonna collapse on itself I like to tie this off Before I start to comb and groom it, you know, five, six turn whip finish is all you need. There we go. 
clear that Velcro tool out and we're going to get to grooming. Furminator works great for this. Um, you know, it's the, I'm just kidding. Sorry. I forget. I can't, people are going to take me too serious, right? <laughs> we had to buy a new one. We actually broke a Furminator. That's what happens when you get two giant dogs, I guess, but. All right, that's the Coyote Ugly. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it looks like it's ready to jump on the bar and dance and sing and serve you drinks and hopefully catch some fish, right? Oh, there's a tagline. Man. Absolutely. Man. Um, fun fly. Play with it. Play with the colors. You're not going to have a ton of options with Coyote. That's the one giant handicap is there's no real dyed Coyote out there. But Brian and I were talking about this earlier today. If you get a good quality not your run-of-the-mill arctic fox but the good quality medallions it will be long enough and you can play with the coloring the downside is you don't get much variation in the color when you go to arctic fox it's a white fur that's dyed one color so the other option out there if uh i know one customer is probably screaming about uh what is it awesome possum zonkers can be cut and turned into a great kind of head material that has this variation i love this natural variation it's perfect for what we want it for that sandy bottom clear water so questions um go to the we'll go to the chat window luke uh don't call your questions in we are live the phone is still on i think brian so type them into the chat window what if you size? can what are the sizes for this fly What's I know up? You cover that the sizes for this one. Sure. So this is a one-aught uh, jig round bend Kamigatsu. Uh, also, a good one is two-aught. I run into this a lot with jig hooks, um, whether it's for nymphs, whether it's for streamers. Different companies really range a lot in sizes with jig hooks. So if you can get your hands on them, it's totally worth doing. We we have. From the same company two different series where a 10 is either pretty reasonable for like a, a stone fly or big enough for a small streamer um is that the is that what they were after i hope um who is that from that was from colin hey colin what's happening bud uh this is again large dumbbell eyes um i was using the uh i think that's most of the size regular marabou nothing crazy uh other questions out there from anybody yeah. thanks for watching everybody how many we have 47 holy cow 47 people out there wow shouldn't have told me that you should have told me it was like <laughs> two or three <laughs> that would have been way less oh, yeah. um how are we doing on time because I, I i mean i prepped a second fly we've only done half an hour um but my thought was we'd take a little intermission i'm gonna use the restroom real quick i'm gonna reset materials if you guys want to tie another fly, awesome. Stay with us. If not, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, this is a lot of fun. I'm glad to see this work like I had it in my mind. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to realize sometimes, but thanks to Brian for letting me <laughs> do this and tinker with it. Somebody has to be the guinea pig. Man. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, buddy. But uh, if if you're not, if you're leaving us, next week is Alex Lafkus. You'll want to tune in for that. I will get that material list. So I will have to, like, interrogate that man for, for a material list. Uh, we've got one more question sure. from Peter. He's wondering why you use the jig hook instead of a straight eye hook on that one. Because I wanted this to, to sit really... I mean, shallow water is the idea there. That was, you know, if you fish that 72 section, for example, there's that long section of flat sand or even above 72 where your fly is in constant contact with the bottom. You know, you could, sure, you could use, you know, a heavy line and a light fly, but a lot of times I'm up there with a six weight, smaller flies. I just wanted something that, that I could bounce off a log or a dock to and not worry about losing it. I mean, this is tied really simple so that I can I can lose two or three and not feel bad about it. That's why it's so basic. But that I think a jig hook's a great great way to add some weight to the fly and not crowd the the hook gap too. So 
Uh, Colin wants to know, would you use an indicator? I would not usually use an indicator. I usually fish this with a six to an eight weight line, uh, excuse me, six to an eight weight rod. Usually fast action, that large dumbbell eye is gonna want some mass in the line to throw it. Anywhere from a 250 to a, or a 200 to a 300 grain line, depending on the water type. You could also fish it, work great on a floating line because it's heavier with a longer leader. It gives you that jig up and down motion. I know some people that do fish this style fly under an indicator for like smallies and stuff like okay. that. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. So you could totally do it that yeah, way. Yeah, and if you got exactly like Brian said, I hope you guys can, can actually hear him. I know the mic's pointed at me, but he was saying some folks will fish a fly just like this for smallies and twitch it a little bit. Excuse me. I think that could work great in colder water temperatures when those fish aren't quite as active. Um, you know, that's what I love about this sport. There's no rules. Try it. Um, maybe wear some headgear, you know, you know, duck if you're trying to roll cast this thing. Um, uh, but I'd want, I'd want some space to cast it probably. Probably a sinking line. Typically. Yeah, I like a sinking line or at least at the very least six weight floating line with maybe a Versa leader or a long floral leader or something like that. So take advantage. Cool. Great job, Matt. All right. We're going to take a quick break, uh, and mute. We'll be back in about five minutes, so hang on for fly number two. Thanks, everybody.
good. People like that. Mike's on. Mike is on, and we're ready Ooh, to go. back. All right, Get that Marabou. I need my flash. Uh oh. Well, we're just gonna have to do this. Can I not buy that? Mm. We'll do it without. What flash do you need? Well, can I need some? Watch, it'll be in my car. Find a flash. I bet. I bet it's in my backpack in the office, but I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. Any other questions? We. That have come in since we took our quick break. Fast break. I think we are all Fast shut. break. Oh, Tom wants to know if to do a remote virtual fly tying session with him. Remote virtual. I think Brian's head might explode if we try that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I would love to try it anyways. Let's do it. Why not? Why not? We'd love to have Tom Larimer do that. I'm sure everyone watching would too. Why wouldn't you? Marabou. Tom gives us a thumbs up on that. Can try Zoom. I've gotten pretty good at that with remote college. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone's sick of Zoom. Yeah, that's what, we're over the Zoom. We're doing the, the U-Tube. U-Tube. It's the thing, man. All right. Am I still in focus? Tom, you want to say hi? You are I mean, focus. I know it. Don't worry about going to the Vice yet. All but, right. Are we ready? Um, all right. I guess we're we rocking and rolling. Rocking and rolling. Screen, screen. All right. I brought a demo fly to show everybody what this looks like, but I forgot it. But if you saw the hold on, we'll be right back screen, it's that fly. I just call it the head case sculpin. It's a really heavy, get down fast sculpin pattern. Um, the Boardman River right here in Traverse City has a newer section of water. They've removed, what, three dams in the past 15 years or so. And we have some new water. It feels like we're out west, but the downside <laughs> Is that it's super fast and we got a lot of sections of water that are really deep and there's a big drop off and so I wanted to fly that I could almost bounce off of the wood drop it down and get it fishing immediately this isn't going to do it quite enough I want to build an even slimmer little sculpin fly to get down so we're actually going to use some basic materials we're going to do marabou schloppen some flash and then we're actually going to use a minnow head brush. If you haven't used these yet, I'm buying myself a new pack tonight, as you can see. Uh, pretty excited about this. It's a one and a half inch synthetic brush, and it just makes building a head for a minnow, a sculpin, really easy. The downside to these brushes are if you're tying a very big fly, there's just not enough length to these. I mean, it's it's maybe half of what this coyote was. So you'll see that in the end, we'll spin this up, but we're gonna build a collar and basically it's gonna take place all these guard hairs that we were using. So we're gonna start with the ever popular B10S Gamagatsu Stinger. These are great hooks. I really like them for just about everything, but the key with choosing streamer hooks in my mind is choose with purpose. Just because everyone uses a B10S doesn't mean that's the be all end all. The reason I'm using this hook is I want extra hook gap when I'm using a kind of a dense head and a dense, you know, application of material, whether it be deer hair, whether it be wool, laser dub, whatever. If I want extra space, I'm going to use a hook like this. It kind of looks like a bass hook. But if you go back to the stream, the hooks we use forever, I mean, Brian, you know, 
used before I was around. I mean, not around around, but in here, like the 9395 TMC 300, those still catch fish and I don't see people use them as much, but choose your streamer hook with intent. That's all I'm going with this. Don't let me go on too much of a tangent. We're actually gonna downsize our thread from our last fly. I'm gonna go right to Viva 6 Ot. Looks just like this. Great thread. 6 Ot is probably a little bit light, but we're gonna use it carefully because I, it's overkill for a smaller hook like this to use 140 on, in my mind, most of the time for the materials we're using. If you're using a heavier material, use a heavier thread. All right. I know I'm gonna contradict myself here because I'm gonna I'm gonna do basically the opposite of <laughs> what I did on this last fly. If I were my scissors, always bring back up scissors, folks. Put those. It's just like in my home, you know, spread out, take up all the space. It's gonna be fun. Again, I'm using large dumbbell double pupil eyes here i just think they look good you know if, if you're tying flies that no one's going to see just the fish maybe i'd just use plain dumbbell eyes or even the uh i mean really the plain ones and put a black dot on them for an eye and call it good now since i'm putting these on the bottom I mean, remember, I'm using this a uh, wide gap hook because I'm building up a lot of head here. Okay, eight wraps, eight wraps, and then around the outside. Big thing here with this brush is leave yourself some space. So I'm leaving an eye, at least maybe an eye and a half of space here. All right, and they're good. You can glue them if you like. I'm not worried about it. I see people glue them. and so worried about their eyes getting turned all the time. I don't know. It's, I find it pretty easy after catching a fish to twist, twist them back into the right spot, maybe. I don't know. I'm not saying they're wrong. I might be right. I don't know. All right, marabou time. I'm going to use... Two plumes of strong marabou here. Again, another plug for this guy. Go through your marabou packs. No marabou pack is going to be all 100% usable. It's just not. It's, that's unrealistic to think so. It's a natural material. They can't control the quality all the time. So go through, pick out the usable stuff, toss the other stuff. Okay, match these guys up. I'm going a little bit longer than a shank length here. This isn't quite as long of a fly, plus these hooks have a fairly short shank. So shank and a half. Again, four wraps, and then go to your shank. Remember, if that stuff starts to spin, it's because you haven't locked it in. Work up the shank of your hook here. Would you rather we have a question here sure yeah would you rather throw a single or articulated hook fly Ooh, it's for me it's all water type dependent i, I really think that um uh, you know if you think about material traveling through the water this is designed simply to get down get down fast with a single hook here it gets it's gonna get into that water column just a little bit faster. Don't get me wrong, I love throwing a big, I mean, six, seven inch articulated fly that dives and darts. I think it's a lot of fun if you have the right water type. But I think anglers should be more conscious of where they're fishing and what makes sense for that water type when they're choosing fly. I mean, you, you can go throw a giant double deceiver or drunken disorderly, whatever you have, every time you're out there, and you'll be a unicorn hunter, and that's okay. That's fine. And 
one time, you know, you'll go out there and you will find the biggest fish in that river that's the greediest fish. But I kind of like to catch fish every time I go out. I don't get to, I mean, not all of us get to fish as much as we want. So I, I really, I know it's a bad answer to a good question. How about this? I would rather fish a, a articulated fly if I knew it could be successful every time. How about that? Fair? All right, usually I would use lateral scale here, a very small, I think it's 1 69th inch lateral scale. I seem to have forgotten it, but a great substitute is flashaboo. I'm gonna use a holographic flashaboo in black here. I'm gonna use two strands on each side because this is a darker material. Rotate. Can you guys hear Storm Payson? She doesn't get to be involved, our shop dog Storm, but... <laughs> we should set up a Storm Cam next time. <laughs> a a storm Cam? Yeah. I have a mount for dogs. <laughs> We'd have, she'd be plugged in though, it'd be kind of... <laughs> Alright, trim that off, great. Set that aside. It's all about the workflow. All right, next we're going to go to the body. We're going to use just a regular schloppen here. If you don't, if you don't know, schloppen's a much webbier fiber. It looks a lot like rooster saddles, but it's all webby. And in our slower water in northern Michigan, webby feathers move more. And anytime you have more movement built into your fly, it's going to look more realistic. Even with these quick shot kind of flies where I'm just trying to get it down. The other reason, it blends really well with this next material we're going to use, which is UV polar chenille again. I'm just going to tie it in by the tip here. Try not to use too many thread wraps. I think a lot of folks will fall into that where they just, especially if you're a newer tire, less is more. But it takes a while to know how much is enough. Next we're going to use, I'm really excited we got these back in stock, Aquavail. This is peanut brittle. Truffle butter is another great color, but this is probably my favorite to blend with black schloppen. It's just kind of a, it's, if you've seen kind of the, uh, what is it, the speckled copper flashaboo, it's like that, but in a polar chenille. We're just going to use the rope here. We don't want to trap too much. Then we're going to bring this right on up near the eyes trim off the tip and you can whip or half hitch try and do it in front of the eyes if you can bring your bobbin cradle over this is a really really helpful tool this is just an alligator clamp you can find them at the hardware store Loon makes a dubbing spinner with one of these attached. It's wonderfully helpful. It's not my favorite dubbing loop spinner, but just for this attachment alone, super worth it. Um, I've had one of these forever, so I'm just using it. Works great. And what I want to do here, where's my frame end loop? Can you see to, over to right here? There. Right there? Okay, right there. perfect. I just wanted to see so people could see what I'm doing here. Thanks, guys. I'm going to clamp both of them together. Can you see that? that in just a bit. So can you see I'm right clamped in together? I'm going to trim that. Okay. You see that down there? Pretty well. So these are lined up. I'm going to wet my marabou here so that, that I'm not catching those fibers. And this is a technique that the guys over at Fly Fish Food have been doing for a little while. And it's just, it's such a cool way to do things because you're you're actually blending flash and feather together and you're making a really real or a really durable little rope essentially it's called complex twist check that out i use it in all sorts of stuff because i just think it looks awesome
I will remind everyone, I didn't mention it earlier, that this video will be archived. So you'll be able to go back, pause it, watch it, rewind, forward, fast forward if you don't want to hear us talking. That's fine. We're not offended. And now I have this really cool schlop and flash blend. And I'm going to orient those fibers every few wraps here. And this is going to serve as the body and the shoulders of this fly. It's going to support that minnow head brush as we go back. And you're going to trap some fibers. It's just, it's just part of the deal. Don't worry. Could you build this as just a really simple woolly bugger or a complicated one? Absolutely. This, this could work great just here or wrapping it up around the eyes too, but I want a little bit more dense material up around the eyes. It's going to push some water. I usually do three on top, three in front, then trim it. Razor scissors are the way to go. That or tungsten carbide. Treat yourself. I know. Sorry. Tons of holiday plugs. I know. <laughs> We're having fun with it. Velcro tool or comb or brush, whatever you got comb this out and you can see you get a pretty good picture of that how that's blended together I think it just looks dynamite yeah I said dynamite I know <laughs> dynamite time for some legs you know this is a pretty straightforward template for a sculpted fly you can play with this all you want all that's really different here is that complex twist and then big eyes and that brush. You can take this and you can turn it into whatever you want. These are fly enhancer legs and they're kind of, they give you different color gradients here. And I just think they look fun, cool, whatever silly legs, rubber legs you have will work wonderfully. I'm going to do one folded in half on each side. You see that there. And you can see, I, I forgot to mention, I usually fold these in half and then add tension with my left hand and place them with my right. It's such a simple way to tie in legs. It's the way to do it. Wrap over the eyes and then back. We're going to trim those. I don't want them to be as long as my marabou. I want them to be just a little bit shorter. Just like that. These are a little long still. Time for your brush. Okay, again, this is minnow head brush, one and a half. We're using tonight, what color are you? Misty black, which is a blend of black EP fibers and some red and blue kind of UV. I can, <laughs> I can hear you guys. <laughs> Peanut gallery is rough tonight, I tell you. All right, I'm going to tie this in. Can you guys see that, the wire on top? Yep. I like the wire on top. It doesn't need to be tucked in. This way you can wrap over your eyes really easily. Then we come to this guy. This will, this will ruin your night right here, this little nub. Use your junk scissors, or if you have synthetic scissors, these things are beasts. They'll cut through anything. I love it. Including your thread, which is, I mean, I did that on purpose. So just so you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're having fun with it. Restart your thread. Don't panic. Just keep tying. Make sure you covered that up. All right. Now we're going to start wrapping. And working this just kind of like we did that coyote in the last fly. Big thing, hang on to your legs here. You don't want them to get wrapped underneath. I'm going to do two or three wraps behind. More wraps with this. It's nowhere near as dense as that coyote. So I'll probably do three. And then I'm going to split the eyes. Can you guys see that? I'm splitting the eyes on top and underneath. 
I'm going to do two wraps like that. And we're going to get this. Okay, that was two. And then I'll start wrapping up by the eye. Everybody see that okay? Okay, thanks. All right, if you feel like you can get some more wraps in here, but you're running out of room, your thumbnail is your best friend. Just work it back. But I think we are right where we want to be. Again, junk scissors, don't use your good scissors. Oh, see, I didn't cut my thread that time. Not bad. We'll get there. I use my thumbnail here, and what I'm doing is trying to work that, that wire end back into the brush so that I don't nick it when I'm tying this thing off. And that's, like I said, it can ruin your night. From there, we're just going to grab your whip finish tool. Now this is 6 ot, so I'll add a second whip finish just to make sure it's secure. You can add some head cement, whatever you like to do, UV, you know, all the fun stuff. We're just going to keep it simple though. Now we just need to comb it out, a little bit of grooming. Now see, those two wraps under there filled that gap between the eyes. If I had just done one, probably would have been fairly exposed, but I think this looks pretty darn good. We get a blend of stuff. This is a fun fly because it's really easy to change colors. Different marabou, different flash, different slopping, and these brushes come in tons of colors from weird stuff like chartreuse um, to your more natural browns and olives and things like that. The one thing I'm going to do, you don't have to do this. I'm actually going to trim underneath here because I want to preserve this hook gap as much as possible. So I'm going to groom that out, comb it out. I'm not going to cut too much, maybe well, a fair amount. It's always scary just trimming right into something you, you tied, you know. This isn't as bad as trimming deer hair, though. So now most of the mass is on top, which is exactly what I want. And now you got a nice little minnow sculpin, head case sculpin. There we go. We did it. Guys, we did it. Yay. We did it. Good job, man. There we go. Well, that was fun. Thanks for sticking with us, everyone. If you've if we've made it, let's let's open the Northern Angler chat window. I feel like a radio host. <laughs> Hi, folks. Today, Hi, folks. <laughs> Hello. Yes, you're on. Hello. <laughs> Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> Have any questions we can answer out there for anyone? We have a question wondering, is it just me coming from colorful Colorado fly fishing? Is it just me or do flies with dumbbell eyes look mean and tough when they're finished? Uh, totally agree with that. I mean, this thing looks like I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't want to piss it off, you know, just like, I like it, especially the double pupils. I mean, red with black, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's all about posture. Make tough. Fish, fight or flight. <laughs> Anyone else? No, has, here's a question. Have you guys used EP brushes before for streamers. Do you guys like those? Do you like them? Do you prefer doing more natural materials? We'd love to hear from you. I mean, this is this is your forum, your questions. Uh, but let's put it on the poll, Guillermo. Anybody I had a uh, funny comment on there um, when you were talking about what scissors to cut the brush with. Use 
surprise that there's. <laughs> yeah. That's why I don't keep my tools at the That's, shop. That's it's true. Uh, they <laughs> last week Brian's tools disappeared instantly, but uh, gone. I think we have some some packaging scissors we use to pack up orders that are probably nicer than some of my fly tying scissors. I usually have one primo set and then everything else is in a slow decline um, with these being kind of at the bottom of the barrel. But they still, these last forever. Dr. Slick, sir, if you're listening, please improve these grips. I mean, come on. Oh, we got safety scissors here. Is that what's happening? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but my fingers don't fit in there very well. I'd probably use these as primaries if they had comfy grips like this. I mean, I that's another, advice. that's a whole podcast topic we can jump into later. But um, we good? I mean, we got any more other questions we can answer? How many? We, how many left? We have Fifty. <laughs> Fifty people. Yeah. Man, guys, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, I feel like we redeemed ourselves. I'm really happy. I'm proud of the work that went into this from everyone. Good job. Next week, big promo. Alex Lafkus. If you don't know him, you should. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to hit the bleep button fast enough. So parental warning for next week. But Alex is a big streamer guru. He, I mean, He's transcended the genre, basically, and he's brought big streamer fishing down to the White River. Um, extremely knowledgeable. Come with your questions. Um, we're excited. We're going to be tying some bucktail stuff. So if, you, if you're new to that, he'll have some tips on that. We're excited to, excited to have him before he heads south. We have one quick question. All right. Here, Matt. Well, let's uh, hit it. What length PP fiber brush was that? And that's from Peter. Sure. That was the minnow head brush. It's one and a half inches. So let me see if I can put that uh, on screen there. Well, I guess maybe not. Yep, yep, is, that, got you. is that readable? It's yep. readable. All right. And it is next Wednesday at? Next Wednesday at 730. We'll have Alex. If you haven't done so, think about hitting the subscribe button for our YouTube channel. It's extremely helpful. You'll get notified when these things go live, when we schedule new streams, things like that. And we're still filling out the calendar. Too. Yeah, hit that notification bell. That tells you what's what's happening and when. Um, awesome. I hope everyone out there is staying healthy. Um, we miss seeing a lot of you, but we appreciate you tuning into things like this. It's, it's fun to at least be able to do this with you. So live from the Northern Angler, uh, it's Wednesday night, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. You can just leave that end screen up.